Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem valid anagram and we're actually gonna be solving this a few different ways. So maybe you will learn something today. So we're given two strings, S and T, and we wanna return true if uh, T is an anagram of S, or basically if both of the strings are anagrams of each other, and false if they're not anagrams. So uh, main thing that they don't mention in this problem is what exactly is an anagram. And basically it means that, you know, to call T an anagram of S is basically saying that using the characters of S, all of the characters, right, every single character, we can create the string T. So basically they're made up of the exact same list of characters. So, so the string S, you can see that it has three a characters, one N character, uh, one G character, one R character, and one M character. So it's made up of in total seven characters. So that must mean that if T is an anagram of S, uh, T has to have exactly seven characters as well, which clearly it does have seven characters, but are they the exact same characters as I wrote up above? Well, let's check. Okay, does it have three A characters, one, two, three, yep, it has three A characters. Does it have a single N character? Yep, it has exactly one N character. Does it have a G character? Yes, exactly one G character. Uh, does it have an R? Exactly one R. It has exactly one M as well. So it has uh, the exact same characters and the same quantity of each character. That's also important, right? Because three A's have to exist in T as well. So in this case, they're anagrams, we can return true. That's great. Uh, second example, uh, rat and car. Uh, both of them have an R. Both of them have an A character, uh, but one of them has a T while the other has a C character. They're both the same length. They're both length three, but they have one differing character. So they're not anagrams. We return false in this case. So the first solution I wanted to talk about is probably the most obvious one, and probably uh, by just listening to me talk about anagrams, you might be able to come up with this by yourself. We just want to count the occurrences of each character in both uh, both strings, right? Uh, what's the easiest way to do that? Well, uh, you could use an array or a hash map. That's what I'm going to use. I like hash maps. Basically what the hash map is going to look like. So basically we're going to have two hash maps, one for each string, and the key value in the hash map is going to be the character. So for example, A in string S, right? Let's use a different color. So A in string S. So how many A's are there? There's three A's, right? The, the value is going to be the count. The key is just going to be the character. We're going to do that for every single character in the string. So that's that's A, N has one, G has one, R has one, and M also has one. And we know that T is the exact same, right? It has three A's, one N, et cetera, et cetera, right? I could continue this. So in the end, you can see that they're the exact same hash map, right? Once we've built these hash maps, we can then go through the keys and then compare that the counts for each character are the exact same, which in this case, yes, it is. So then after that comparison, then we know that they're anagrams, then we can return true. And how exactly I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna actually iterate through the keys of one of these. So in, in this case, for example, I'm just gonna iterate through all the keys in string S. So A, N, G, and then make sure the counts Right, we wanna make sure that the count of each of the characters is the exact same. And if we make sure that both strings have the exact same length uh, before we actually do the hash map stuff, then we actually only have to iterate through one of the hash maps and comparing it to the other hash map. Right, because if we make sure that uh, T has exactly three A's, T has exactly one N, T has exactly one G, et cetera, et cetera. If we make sure that the, all of that is true and that's inside of T, then we pretty much know T is exactly the same as S because they have to be if they are the same length. So that's the solution. Uh, time complexity of this is big O of N, uh, or rather let's say big O of S plus T, uh, because we're gonna have to iterate through both of the strings. So we, uh, so that's the time complexity. The memory complexity is the same, S plus T, because clearly we are building hash maps that are gonna be of size, uh, potentially up to the size of S and the size of T. So the downside of this solution is we are gonna need some extra memory. And the second solution that I show you is actually going to solve that memory problem. So stay tuned in the video if you want to see that. But for now, let's jump into the coding solution of uh, this hash map solution that I'm talking about. Okay, so now let's code it up. And like I mentioned, 
A main thing we're just going to be doing is counting the characters in both of the strings. So we're going to create hash maps for that. This is how you can do that in Python. Uh, but remember, before we even do that, we want to make sure that the length of both strings is exactly the same. Because if they're not the same length, then of course it's impossible for them to be palindromes. So we can immediately, whoops then we can immediately return false if they are not the same length. Otherwise, we can actually run the algorithm. So let's just uh, go through the strings at the same time. So we can iterate uh, basically through the length of the string s because we know they're both the same length. So we can just use the index i for both of the strings. Uh, count s is basically gonna count the occurrence of each character in uh, string s, of course. So uh, each time we see uh, the, a character, so a character is basically gonna be S at index I. That's the key of the hash map. Uh, every time we see a character, we wanna increment the count of that character by one. So can we just say one plus this? Can we just say one plus this? Well, in Python, no, because what if that character doesn't even exist in the hash map yet? Then this is gonna throw a key error, right? Key does not exist. So to get around that in Python, at least, there's a nice little function uh, with hash maps that you can use that's called get. So uh, get this, uh, you know, this uh, key, and it'll basically do exactly what's being done over here on the left side, but the second parameter to this function is basically a default value. So zero is the default value in this case. That means that if this key does not exist in the hash map, then the default value that this function is gonna return is zero, which is of course what we would want it to return, right? So with this line, we're just counting the occurrences of each character in string S. We can do the exact same thing uh, with string T just by copy pasting this and then changing everything to T. So making sure we use the T hash map and making sure we iterate through the string T, right? T at index I. So that's pretty much it for building the hash maps. Next, we wanna iterate through the hash maps and make sure the counts are the same. So let's say for C, for the character in count uh, S. So we just wanna make sure the counts of both uh, hash maps are the same. So count at character I is equal to count T at character i. So the counts are the same. Actually, in this case, we'd wanna make sure that the counts are not the same because if they're not the same, then we basically know to return false immediately because uh, then we know that they're not anagrams. If you have noticed, we're iterating through the keys, in Python at least, we're iterating through all the key values of uh, count s, right? The, the count map of string s and c is gonna be the key, but what if that key does not exist in the T map, right, count T? What if it doesn't exist in this map? Well, again, we can use that default function of get so that it doesn't throw a key error for us and it'll return a default value of zero. So that's uh, basically the entire algorithm, right? We built the hash map, we performed the check, and then if, if we never return false here, that must mean that they are anagrams. So then if the loop exits, we can go ahead and return true. Uh, that's the entire code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. So you can see on the left, it does run. It's relatively efficient, though it doesn't reflect that on leak code. But basically you can actually do exactly what I just showed you with one line of code, at least in Python. But I, I think this is kind of cheating and it probably won't work in an interview. But counter is a data structure in Python, which is a hash map, but it basically counts things automatically for you. So we can run a counter on S and we can run a counter on T. And if these counters are exactly equal, basically by doing the equal sign, I'm just doing what I did down here, right, with the for loop, but the equal sign does it for us instantly. So uh, it does that, and then we can just return the result. If they're equal, it'll return true. If they're not equal, it'll return false. I can run that and make sure that it works, which it does, and it's actually slightly more efficient, I guess. The overall time complexity and space complexity of both of these solutions is exactly the same, just this takes more lines of code because we're actually explicitly writing out all the operations. So now what if, as a follow-up question, your interviewer asks you, how can you make a solution where we don't actually need extra memory? Can you do a solution with O of one memory? How would you solve that problem? It's a good question, and the solution is actually simpler than you might think. Just kind of thinking about how anagrams work, 
if you took all these characters and put them in a hash map where we can count the occurrences, then it's pretty easy to check if they're equal. But isn't there another way? What if we uh, made sure that the characters show up in the exact same order every single time? What do we mean by order? Well, one possible way would be sorted order, right? Because if, if they really are the exact same characters, then if we put them in sorted order, then they should actually become the exact same string. Then we can literally just do an equals operation on both of the sorted strings and guarantee that they're going to be equal. But the downside is, what's the time complexity of doing sort? Well, in some cases with bad sorting algorithms like bubble sort or something, it might be n squared, right? Uh, good sorting algorithms can do it in n log n time, right? Worst case, big O of n log n time. Uh, but you know, the space complexity is kind of iffy. Usually sorting algorithms, at least good ones, actually do use extra memory. They use O of n extra memory, but sometimes they don't. Sometimes they can be really optimized and actually run on uh, constant memory, constant extra memory. It will depend on which built-in library function you're using, but usually for some reason interviewers just assume that sorting doesn't take extra space. So it's definitely something to discuss with your interviewer. Yeah, so basically if you just sort it, it solves the problem for you, right? Because if we took anagram and we sorted it, we'd get A, 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 G, M, N, R, right? it would be the same order. And then if we take the this string T, sort it, it's the exact same characters. So when we sort it, it should be the exact same string and it is. So now let's get into the code of this solution. Okay, so now you can see that these were the two solutions we originally came up with. Now let's do the third and final solution. Uh, we can just run the sort function on S and the sort function, the built-in sort functions at least uh, in Python on T as well. And if they're exactly equal, it'll return true. If they're not equal, it will return false. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And on the left, you can see, yes, it does. It's relatively efficient, but technically it's not as efficient as the two previous solutions that we came up with below. And who knows, maybe your interviewer will actually want you to write out your own sorting function for this. But I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.